Like, share, and subscribe. Live for Love TV. Oh. Like, share, subscribe. Live for Love TV. Awesome! Live for Love TV back here with you the 1st of December um, 2021. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Nighttime vibes here. So I'm just, um, as they say, chilling at nighttime. The background sounds, as you can hear. I was wondering, when people claim to be in love, madly in love sometimes, get divorced, how often does one partner wish the other partner well and say, go forth and do well. I hope you do, I hope you have a great life and mean it. How often does that happen? Doesn't seem to happen too much, does it? Often people are fighting over stuff and, you know, one's trying to, sometimes one is trying to bring the other down to their knees and um, literally break the other one. Amazing, isn't it? That's a divorce for people who claim to love one another. This happens more often than not. Occasionally, the divorced couple get on well. They both go on to having their own partners and they're still able to have good conversations, but that doesn't happen very often, which is a very sad state. I bring that up because the divorce that happened a few years ago, that started a few years ago, between the European Union and the United Kingdom is a bitter divorce. Bitter divorce. It's as bitter as they come. And it's a real divorce. And, and here's the problem. Whether it's right for someone to get divorced or whether, you know, whether it's wrong, that's not the question I'm making here about the Brexit situation. But it's quite clear that when you look at the European Union situation now, that it's not in their best interest for the United Kingdom to do well. It's not in their interest. And go further than that. They, are, they will do anything they can to bring the United Kingdom to its knees. Because they do not want any other person to leave the European Union and to say, well, I'm, I'll be better off without you. I'll be better on my own. So not only are they not wishing the United Kingdom well, they're actually actively seeking for it to go wrong, for things to go really badly. Now, this is, a, this is something that, I, as far as I'm concerned, is a fact. And I say it's a fact because it's happened in history. In fact, the very country I'm talking about now, the United Kingdom, this is exactly what they did when they were the colonial powers, uh, masters of, of, of many countries around the world, when they boasted that the sun never um, set on the British Empire. When people wrestled uh, for a hundred of years to get free of the United Kingdom or England or whatever you want to call them, they did everything they could to bring these people to their knees, to heal, so that it would not look like it was good for people to leave them. So it's, it's, you know, it's a little bit of what they would say, poetic justice happening to them right now. But this is almost, almost always the case. This happened during slavery. It's not just Britain, but America and all the countries that, that had people as slaves in their, in their, in their um, slave plantations. When slavery was over, they did everything they could to make it look like the slaves were useless and could do nothing. And they put pressure on them and imprisoned them and continued to marginalize them and came up with all kinds of rules and Jim Crow and all this all stuff. Why? Because they couldn't afford for the slaves to do well. And then it would embarrass them for what they had been doing. Same as the European Union is doing to the United Kingdom. So this is a constant. This happens all day long. Russia has did it with the USSR. They've done nothing to help the people that left them. If anything, they've done the most they can to put, keep these people in some sort of under, under constant stress and constant pressure, constantly, whether it's you know, withholding uh, oil or you know, gas or natural gas or whatever they can do, and you know, breaking up contracts when they see contracts coming from Western powers to these former, um, what they call colonies in the USSR. They'll do whatever they can to break it up. It's like the European Union is doing just like the slave masters did, just like the colonial powers did. This is constant, and as I said, just like Mr. and Mrs. Divorcee often do. Now, it doesn't mean that both are doing it to one another. Some people, when, they, when, they, when a break comes, they move on and, and just live a good life. But that good life can, obviously, it can often embarrass the person they were with formerly. 
And because that person hasn't grown, and that person doesn't accept that they really wasn't the right person to be in a partnership with that other person, they'll do whatever they can to bring people down to their knees. So as I said, it's poetic justice what's happening to the United Kingdom now. And, they should be, and the people who live in the United Kingdom must understand that it's not in anybody in Europe's interest for you to succeed. Regardless of whether you voted for Brexit or you were uh, against Brexit. I'm not, I'm not discuss, that, doesn't, that doesn't concern me. And that's way past now. The truth is, you're going to have more, you've got more enemies around the corner than friends. You have to have because of the situation that you're in. So when you hear about all these arguments about fishing waters and all, they do, it's just pure, you know, pure anything they can do, whether it's the French, the migrants, the European, anything they can do to make the UK's life hard and almost impossible. So maybe one day they come running back to the European Union and say, oh, I think maybe you were right, maybe we needed to be together. That's, that's the game of the European Union. It's the same game the British played under the, with all the colonial powers. Now, recently, Barbados has now uh, become a republic, no longer has the Queen or United Kingdom as the head of uh, state. So another one falls by the wayside, another one, not fall though, another one gets free, wriggles way free from this colonial master. And as usual, whenever these things, and these, these things happen, just like in Ghana, they send their representative today. They sent it, uh, yesterday they sent Prince Charles. There's always someone there. It used to be Mount Batten or one of these other guys would go to Ghana or one of these places. And they go there, in, you know, he didn't go in his uniform this time, but normally they go in uniform on a pomp and patch and pretend like they're still friends of yours. They can't be your friends. I'm sorry to tell you people. They're there to watch out for their own interest. The slave master never set his plantation up for the benefit of the slaves. The colonial masters never set up their colonial uh, enclaves and countries for the benefit of the people that they had co colonized. They're not there for your benefit. They can't be there for your benefit. And regardless, yes, we know this is uh, what I'm talking about, the Europeans and how they've done it. But it doesn't matter who the person is. These things are not set up for the benefit of the person that is under the thumb of these power, power structures. So it's time for people to wake up, whether they're in any Caribbean country, any African country. African countries are all, are all independent now, apparently. But they've still got some Commonwealth ties. And just like Barbados, even though it's got Commonwealth ties, Africa has been, since 1957, Ghana, 1960, many of the other countries um, took their independence. They need to take their independence from the Commonwealth as well. Because all of this history is dirty. And these people will never, never be on your side. They can't afford to be. And you cannot afford to be successful if you leave them. Just remember that. So when you leave, you know, your wife, or when you leave your husband, or when you leave the colonial master or the slave, work doubly hard. Discipline yourself because some tough times are coming and you're going to have a lot of enemies. And the people you thought you could rely on and trust are going to turn against you. So you need, to, you need to strengthen up, discipline. You need to be about your business on a daily, every day. Not just one day here, one day there and just, oh yeah, can I, I can go on the tree and have a nice little smoke now and a nice little drink. Those days are over. You should have done that under colonial power. Do that under slavery. Do that if you, if, you know, under certain circumstances. Now, you're, now you claim you're free, you're going to have to be double down on your discipline and your... Um, your focus on what, where you want to go in life. Because there must be a reason you wanted to be independent. Just like the UK. There must be a reason the UK wanted to be independent. It can't just be because, oh, we don't like those guys over there. It must be because they want to, you know, they believe they can do much better than they would without. So that means everyone's going to have to work harder. And I don't think the UK, from what I can see from the outside, has thought these things through. They have such arrogance about them from the days of their colonial powers. that They, ha they haven't thought these things through. They don't have their populace behind them to work as hard as they're going to all have to do in order to be able to be successful. These things, these things seem to go, go in cycles. Happened with colonial power. When Kwame Nkrumah in 1957 said free, Ghana is free, free forever. Well, a funny type of freedom when you suffer from poverty. It's a funny type of freedom because anybody who's ever been poor, and I mean really poor, what we call dirt poor, doesn't feel that freedom is of any use to them. Economics always come with freedom. And you need to be disciplined to make sure your economics are on board so that you can sustain 
and move forward in whatever thing you say you want to do. But anyway, that's enough for now. It's nighttime vibes. Take care. See you soon. Live for Love TV. God bless. This is Live for Love TV. Live for Love TV. Yes, I am. This is Live for Love TV.